is one of my favorite days because we've got the draws. We've got the draws. They came out last <laughs> night. I was watching online, and when I saw that quarter come out, Venus Coco again shocking but pretty fun i just want to know what the odds are of that happening again so soon pretty fun maybe for coco i bet it's not so much fun for venus venus is going to be 40 in june uh she hasn't played any matches this year she had kind of a slow end of last year winning one match in three tournaments who likes to play a hot 15 year old and when you're venus and won seven grand slams it's uh it's tough to go out there against someone who's playing so well. The interesting thing to me about that matchup is that Venus was the heavy favorite when they played at Wimbledon, especially yes. because how well she's done at Wimbledon over the years. The surface. The surface, exactly. That has now completely flipped, and Coco is supposed to beat her hero. And that becomes a little bit more of a mental challenge, I think. So I'm interested in seeing how she handles it. <laughs> what a moment right here where she said after her, uh, you know, thanks for everything you did. She kind of planned that before the match. Didn't know she was going to win the youngest <laughs> qualifier in Wimbledon tournament history in the open era. And then went on to the fourth round there after beating one of her heroes in Venus Williams. And just two majors later, we got a rematch in the first round of Australia. I mean, Venus had won four of her seven singles Grand Slam titles before Coco was born. That's right. It's unbelievable. It's really quite unbelievable. We also have so many other great yeah. matchups on the women's side that uh, you, know, you just look for those popcorn first rounds, and then you start to look for where's Roger, where does, you know, where does team land, where does Medvedev land, and some of the other ones that are quite interesting, Simona Halep and Jen Brady. Jen Brady has had a great start to the year, beating Barty a couple of weeks ago. Actually, Vekic and Sharapova. We, Mira Sharapova is down to 145 in the world. Obviously, a very dangerous floater with five majors under her belt. Hasn't been playing as well, but boy, does she compete extremely well. And the reason why I'm worried about Sloane Stevens there against Zhang Shuai is because Zhang beat Sloane in the first round of the Australian Open two years ago. Sloane has not won a match this year, and she hasn't looked great. Both of the top seeds, I mean, Karolina Pliskova against Kristina Mladenovic's tough, and then Ash Barty taking on Jen Brady as well. That That's a tough one for the world number one. Simone Halep is the world number one, not the four. Uh, excuse me, that's Simone Halep against Jen Brady, which is a tough matchup there. But as we talk about these matchups, Madison Keys, Daria Kazakina, Yes, but Keys has beaten her six times, 12-1 in sets as well. Yeah, I, that one is a popcorn match because of name value, and Daria has had a, you know, some, some great results, but she's ranked in the 60s now. She hasn't been playing well. She was actually in qualifying last week in yeah. Adelaide. Madison got to the finals of Brisbane, so if Madison plays anywhere near her form, that should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I'm believing in keys in that match. But there a lot of tremendous first-round matches on the women's side of the draw. On the men's side of the draw, there are quite a few as well. The, the one that really jumps out to me is Novak Djokovic. I know he never loses in Australia, but he's got jean Leonard Struff in the first round, and he w he's only two spots out of being seated. Struff. 5-0 right. head-to-head in and sets, though. I understand, but it's still a dangerous match because Stroop has a huge game. It's just that Djokovic defends so well. Stevie Johnson's got a pretty tough draw. He's got Roger Federer. He's given him some trouble over the years. Lost to him when they played, but 6-6 six and six the last time they played. Poor Francis Tiafo. He's got Daniel Medvedev. Medvedev playing incredibly well. Tiafo has quarterfinals to defend. All kinds of pressure on Francis, and he's got the type of guy that's going to keep you out there for six hours to be able to beat him. Zverev. Hasn't been playing too well. Any match that he plays is a pop four match. Will he get any serves in? Batista Gut has been playing brilliantly this year. Lopez playing great this week. And Denis Shapovalov, we'll see what happens with him. He plays a guy that has more muscles than anyone else on the tour. <laughs> and the popcorn match that we didn't talk about is Riley Opelka and Fonini. Oh, yeah. They played at the U.S. Open. I think it was last year, and Opelka won in four sets. So who wants to see a serve like that that's going to be bouncing over your head like Riley Opelka? It's tough to break his serve. And Fonini's not the tallest guy on the, on the tour either, so it is literally over his head. But he did beat him in Davis Cup a couple of weeks later in a tough three-setter. That was tough. Let's get back to Serena Williams, though, because she's a big story here, and she's right. going for her 24th major. I want to know the road to that number 24 record-tying major for Serena Williams. How will it go? It starts tough against a young Russian in Potapova. She's a good player, could face Kanta, Yastremska, who's been playing well, Wozniacki in the fourth round, then potentially rematch with Naomi Osaka 
in the quarterfinals before potentially Barty or, or Halep in a final. You know what I like about this draw for Serena is, to me, it gives her a runway. I mean, Potapova, yes, she's 18. She's been playing some qualifying already this year. So I, she's a tough player, but it's not a, a popcorn match, I don't think. And she has a little bit of time, I think, until the fourth round. To me, it's going to be Yastrzemska. Yastrzemska is 19 years old. She's in the semifinals today. She is a fearless competitor. And then Osaka, who Osaka, by the way, could play Corey Goff or Venus Williams in the third round. That's what happened, I think, at the U.S. Open last year, Goff and Osaka. And then Barty in the, or Kvitova in the semi. So it's not an easy draw. And it, it is an easy draw, I think, at the beginning, but then tougher, uh, which you would expect because Serena is the eighth seed now. Projected fourth rounds. And by the way, out of that Venus Coco match, the winner could play Naomi Osaka in the third round at the U.S. Open. Remember, Coco played Osaka in the third round and lost that match. But if the seeds play out, which they never do, here's the projected round of 16. You're exactly look, right. Look, when you're talking about Serena Williams, she's the type of player that once she gets on a little bit of a roll and she wins those early round matches, she's tougher and tougher to beat. Having said that, the players that are capable of hanging with her Naomi Osaka is obviously one of those that can match her with power, with speed, all the type of things that Serena brings. Osaka also brings to me. Those are the players that can beat her if they're hot. The other player I was looking at was Barty. I mean, that's kind of an interesting story where her draw, how her draw lines up, because will she be feeling the pressure and the expectations? Think about where Barty was last year mm -hmm. when she came into the Australian Open and she was just trying to go deep. She was trying to kind of assert her game and her talent very different place this year, and I think her draw looks favorable. That's good for her. She's looking to become the first Aussie woman to win at the Australian Open since the 1970s. So a lot of pressure on Ash Barty, but has been playing well in Adelaide and leading up to this event. Meantime, on the men's side, you got Novak Djokovic. He's, the, he's your seven-time champion. He's your defending champion, comes in with a whole lot of confidence, and the projected fourth round sees Djokovic taking on Diego Schwartzman. Once again, these matchups may not happen because at the top, you got Rafa Nadal. He could be playing Nick Kyrgios in the fourth round. Could be Corinne Hatchinoff as well. But you know with Nick Kyrgios, if he sees he's in the same section as Rafa, he's going to be motivated to get to that match. There's no question he's going to want to play Rafa. They do not like each other, and it's a great matchup. So in some ways, poor Hatchinoff, I feel bad for him. He's probably going to have a Nick Kyrgios that's motivated and trying to win. And as we know, Nick Kyrgios is one of the best players in the world when he is motivated. Here's the road to... For Rafa, first round shouldn't be much of a problem with Hugo Delian. He's more of a clay court counter puncher, and Rafa should be able to take care of that. Early matches all look pretty good. Karenia Busta, perhaps formerly a top 10 player. Countrymen, maybe there'll be a little pressure there, but that's when it gets interesting after that for Rafa. Kyrgios or Hatchinoff, Dominic Team or Monfils in the quarterfinals. Then Daniel Medvedev. I don't think Zverev, we're going to see him the way he's been playing. He's going to be out before he even gets to Medvedev. And then somehow he's got to figure out, Rafa, if he wants to win this tournament, how can he beat Djokovic in Australia? Didn't happen last year, and it was very it wasn't difficult. Close, hey, no. Rafa's only won one Australian Open. I mean, that's the only Grand Slam that he's only won one of them. 2009. So, 2009, and he beat Roger Federer in that final. He's been to four other finals, including the one last year, wasn't able to get through. But the big note here is that Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer are on the same side, right? And Rafa is on his own side. Sure, Medvedev is there, Tracy, but he would not have to face Novak or Roger until that final. Yeah, and it's also kind of interesting on Rafa's side that Team and Medvedev flipped after the ATP Cup. And Team is now the fifth seed, so he had to play Rafa one round earlier in the quarters. But yeah, you're right. And Rafa is, and Zverev is the seed there, the seventh seed at the bottom. He hasn't had a great, a great start to 2020. Look, last three majors when I've done Racket Bracket for Tennis Love Racket Channel, Bracket. We've got it. It's on uh, Tennis.com. I've always picked the one of the big three that doesn't have the other one in their half of the draw. Yeah. So at Wimbledon, it was Djokovic on his own. He went ahead and won. Barely, obviously, saved a couple of match points against Roger. And then at the U.S. Open, it was Rafa who didn't have the other top three player there. And he ended up playing none of them and yeah. winning the title. So it's usually a good sign. Whoever the big three that doesn't have the other one in his half wins. It's just hard to believe. So are you anyone. hard to believe picking anyone. Rafa? No. I'm not picking anybody yet. Okay. Give me a little but bit. You've but you've got the draw. I understand that. <laughs> I'm just, you know, going to wait a little while. Okay. I'd be shocked if anyone beats Djokovic the way he has played down under over the years. Or the way he's been playing. Winning six matches already in the ATP Cup. He looks, he looks already in 
tough top match form and beat Rafa in straight sets. You think he in the peaked too early? Set. Is it possible he's peaked no, too early? No, I don't think so because you need some matches before the first Grand Slam, and now he's had this week off. So he could have even taken a day or two off or a slow practice day and then ramped it right back up. Reminder, you can find all of the draws, men's and women's, on tennis.com. You can play Racket Bracket with us. Pick your winners. See if you can get some fantastic prizes on Monday. On day one, it starts with the Federer Djokovic half of the draw playing and the Serena Venus Coco side of the draw. So it's going to be a blockbuster day one. That's Sunday here in the States on that's Tennis right. Channel. Yeah, that's right. 6 Eastern is Tennis Channel Live. 7 Eastern will have the matches for you right here.